Hey guys, it do be your boy Chili here. Uh, welcome to a new little series I'm gonna be doing. Like I threatened, it's gonna be a little bit more web stuff. Those of you who watched my Engine X and Chill videos, there was two of them, kinda saw the, uh, the direction I was heading there, building up, uh, configuring Engine X, getting PHP, FPM working. I was gonna build on that getting Composer and Laravel on there and you know database installed and everything But I thought you know, I don't want to I don't want to slow roll it. I don't want to build it up piece by piece I just want to make something So I figure oh, you know what I'm doing. I'm just gonna jump right in I'm gonna make something that I was planning on making anyways, and I'm gonna do it uh, You know on video see how this works so that being said let's uh Let's just jump into it. So what are we actually going to be building? Let me let me just uh, show you that first. Well, so my parents, they have, uh, they have a lot of fridges. Well, not a lot of, maybe two fridges, but they also have like separate freezers. Like, you know, uh, one of those uh, chest freezers, yeah. Like these bad boys, they got like, maybe two or three of these and then they got like two fridges and they also have like a walk-in pantry in the basement which is it's not really it's not refrigerated but it stays pretty cool even during the summer so they got a lot of food storage they tend to like they grow a lot of vegetables and stuff like that and fruits and they buy stuff like they'll buy like like basically the meat of an entire animal and just like freeze it all. So they got a lot of food. They do, you know, they do canning and other preservation bullshits. I don't know. They got a lot of food and they got to keep track of it. And what they've been doing is they've just been like, they got like a whiteboard on the wall. Uh, whiteboard, yeah. So yeah, well, maybe not like this, but yeah, maybe something like this. And they just kind of write lists on there, like what's in what place. And they got like paper lists. And uh, that's okay, I guess, except, you know, kids would visit the house and they would start erasing stuff on the whiteboard. That was a problem, apparently. And also, like, just when you're out shopping and you want to know, like, you know, what are we out of? What do we need? If it's on the whiteboard in, you know, in the front porch, not that useful. So what I figured is I was out there for Christmas thinking, what do I want to, what, what do they need for a Christmas present? I was going to... It's gonna make them some kind of website thing, and I saw this. I'm like, sure, this will be Christmas present. Uh, make you guys a little web app where you can uh, where you can manage this stuff, and you can uh, you can access it from your phone, and you know remotely is it'll be a good time. It'll be a, it'll be a neat little project um, for me, and it's a good value for them. I mean, if you were to hire someone to make you a custom you know, client server web application like this. It would, you know, it would cost you thousands of dollars, right? And I'm gonna do it, you know, so it's, it's a it's a good Christmas present, although they don't probably don't realize it, but that's fine. It's all good, right? Uh, the, the problem is I didn't make it, like that was Christmas of 2019 when I said I was gonna do that. It's now 2021 and the, the, the web application still doesn't exist. So I figure I gotta get on that. And you know what? I might as well make some content out of it as well. Uh, so yeah, that's what it's gonna be. So the basic idea, let's, uh, let's just plan it out here. I'll probably split these videos up. I might record in a big chunk and then split them up on YouTube. But this video, is likely just gonna be, uh, I don't need this, do I? All right, I got pen, that's good. So yeah, this video is just, just gonna be basically me uh, <clears throat> describing what, what we're gonna be dealing with, what, what we're gonna be making here, the details, the, the broad strokes of the planning. So first things first, um, this is gonna be made mobile first, because I think primarily, they're probably gonna be using it from their phone. So I'm not gonna like design it first for you know my uh, my browser on my computer and then try to tweak it for mobile I'm gonna be starting off you know quote unquote responsive although mostly I'm just gonna be worrying about how it looks in your standard uh, mobile layout and um, yeah the application it should be simple 
there there should really be three main features. Like, first of all, they've got different areas where they store their food, right? <clears throat> so one might be like uh, kitchen fridge. Sure. Another one might be like porch freezer. Okay. So you'll have, they'll be able to register these different areas into the application. That'll obviously go on the server. Uh, and in the UI, they'll look like this. And if you click on one of them, then it should, it should be like an accordion that expands out. Uh, so let's say that this one is, uh, uh, what do you call it? Let's just call it the cellar. I don't know what it is. It's not quite a walk-in freezer, but it's weird. Uh, and when you click on one of them, that'll expand that one. And then you'll have, uh, you know, lists of stuff that are in the freezer or in the whatever, the storage area, and then a quantity on this side. Uh, and that's it. And you can register, you know, new items into that area. And uh, you can change, you know, the quantities of existing items. You can remove items. That's uh, pretty much a pretty, that's like the main idea of it. So it's not super complicated. Uh, and of course, the other thing you're going to want to be able to do is you're going to want to be able to uh, to search for an item. So let's say I want to search for uh, pickles. Good old pickles. And when I search for that, it'll give me, you know, a list of maybe like headings here in the area. So, you know, kitchen, fridge. Man, my writing has really gotten worse. As amazing as that... Uh, you know, you wouldn't think it's possible, but it uh, it has. Uh, so you like area, kitchen, fridge, and then you'd see like maybe there are two things that match pickles in here, and then right, and then if you click on this area, it will take you to you know the the, the kitchen, fridge, and expand that, and so on and so forth. And you can also edit the items like you can here. You can edit their amount in the the search. So obviously, the ability to you know if like if they've got like different boards and sheets of paper, and they want to find out okay where did we keep where did we put the uh, you know the t-bone steaks or whatever and then they have to start looking through all these lists manually with their eyes it's a lot better if they could just on the app they could just search you know where is the steak and then they'd get a list of all the steaks and then they could just you know take an inventory of that from there so that's the basic idea of like the interface and what you would be able to do with it at least for now at least what I can remember from me while I'm making this video. I might have had other ideas. I'm sure they'll come to me, you know, in due time if they exist. And as I make it, I might come up with new features. And if I deploy it to them, they'll probably have ideas of what they want to see in it. And I can add them maybe if I'm feeling generous. But so first of all, I don't want this to be like there are two ways we could go. With, well, I mean, there are more than two ways, but two main ways we could go with it is like a dynamic web page or an SPA, right? Dynamic web page is page is generated on the server side sent to the client as HTML. Every time they they want to make a change, they want to add something, delete something, it'll have to go back to the server and then the server will generate and then it'll come back and it'll load as a page. And that's not that's not a super good experience in my opinion. Uh, I'd rather for a lot of reasons, I'd rather have it as an SPA where you know they make a change here, it is reflected in the UI immediately, and that is sent to the server as you know, um, like a, in a REST API, JSON, JSON data, saying this changed, and then the server will update its information and maybe give a response. But the UI will be rendered in the client, you know, using a JavaScript uh, framework. Like well, what we're going to be using is uh, Vue.js. So, front end is going to be Vue.js, JavaScript. It's actually going to be TypeScript because I love me some statically compiled goodness. I like TypeScript. It's, it's a little bit of a pain in the butt to get going. Um, there's less information on it on the web, but I am fairly practiced in getting Vue.js working with TypeScript and other things. So, should be able to swing it somehow. Uh, so, yeah, SPA. One of the main things, backend, is going to be, you know, my favorite, Laravel. So that's going to be communicating. So we're not going to have, we're not going to be using Blade templates. That part of Laravel, not going to be necessary. 
Uh, it's going to be used only, mainly for uh, its, uh, what do you call it? So many words, you know what I mean? Um, I can't remember. ORM. That's what the word is. Object Relational Mapping, which is called Eloquent. And that is how we're going to be interfacing with the database, which is going to be my MySQL, MySQL. I don't know. I don't know what people call these things. It's weird because I work with these words so much, but I, I never really hear people talking about them. I just read about them. And so I don't know how to say them. But it's fine. It doesn't matter. Nobody cares. I don't care. If you care, you shouldn't. But, so that's one thing. Yeah, Laravel, Aurum, Eloquent. And it's going to be communicating with the SPA, you know, with the, uh, with the JSON. API, so we'll have API routes and web, and there's going to be some authentication bullshit. The authentication is going to be a pain in the butt. But we'll also have um, a Redis server running for caching. This is a database, but it's not a relational database. It's an in-memory, um, basically, key value store. Uh, so like a, a, a giant hash tree maybe, although there's a lot of different data structures you can put into it. But it's useful for storing things like session data and caches and you know, all sorts of stuff. And it might also be useful for some other middleware that we use. It's not probably not um, essential that we use Redis in this project, but why not? You know, it's good. Uh, what else? So communicating with the SPA there will be a you know a standard HTTP rest API but um, like I'm running out of space here and it's annoying but like there will be multiple users of this so there's gonna be the server right this is this is the server imagine this is the server this icon means a server <laughs> Yeah. So you got like multiple clients, right? And if one person adds something to the list, normally with a standard um, with a standard web page or even an SPA, for this user to to see that change, they would have to refresh the page. They would it would need a user action. But we want to push. So if user A adds something to a list, we want that information to be pushed to this device automatically. And in order to do that, um, generally, the best way to do that is to use uh, web sockets. So we're going to be using web sockets and we're going to be using it with some technology called uh, Pusher, uh, Laravel, Echo. So Pusher is a cloud service. Um, and you can pay them money and then you can connect to them from your, from your, you know, from your Laravel or whatever, and you can send stuff and then this will push to your clients, but we're going to run the pusher, the WebSocket server on our server and we're going to use a, you know, free open source package to do that. It'll be good. We'll be able to, uh, you know, to real-time push data to clients. And, yeah, and that'll be good. And I guess that's mainly the technologies that we're working with here, I guess. Uh, the Vue.js will be using something called Nuxt, which is a, which is a, fr it's a framework for a framework. Amazing, right? But uh, this is what we're going to be using at my, my place of employment. So it's not strictly necessary for this project. The great thing about Nuxt is it allows you to pre-render your, um, your SPA, which, which sounds weird because you use an SPA to be able to render on the client. But now you're saying, but we're going to render on the server to render on the client. But trust me, it makes sense when you understand, you know, search engine optimization. But anyways, it's not, I'm not using Nuxt because it's super necessary for this project. I'm using Nuxt because it's good practice for me. And it's nice. It is, it is a nice little workflow for Vue.js. So, yeah, I think that is about all of the ideas. I was probably going to say something else, but I forgot. Uh, I do that sometimes. But you know, it'll, it'll come out. And the, uh, oh yeah. And the, 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 the DevOps, I mean, I'm going to, you know, you know me, I like, uh, I like, I like, I like 
Vagrant, an actual virtual machine to work in. Uh, so we're going to have Vagrant on the uh, on the development side, and we're going to provision it. We're going to use Ansible. So normally, what I've been doing mostly is I've just been provisioning with scripts that you run from uh, from Vagrant, just shell scripts. But I've been getting a little bit into Ansible lately. I've been like, yeah, I might as well learn the learn the cool kid tools, but. Yeah, and it, it works pretty well so far. I'll, I'll take you through that stuff in the next video when we get started. But yeah, that's about it. Oh yeah, and when we deploy it, we're going to deploy it to AWS EC2. I've got a year, a free year of um, EC2, and I can extend that by basically just creating a new account with a different email when this one expires. So I basically have infinite free hosting. As long as you're, you know, you're happy with uh, t2.micro, then free hosting. So, yeah, and I'll show that too. I'll show all the stuff with AWS when we get to it. And in the next video, I'll show you the stuff we do to Ansible. I was considering, and I'll talk about that later. No, don't worry about it. this video. This video is just going to be, yeah, yeah, this stuff here. The, the, the broad plan of how we're going to make this. Oh yeah, well, the last thing I was going to say is, this is the basic idea, I'm going to make an SPA. In the future, I might consider upgrading the SPA to a PWA, which stands for Progressive Web Application. Basically, that means you can install the web application onto your cell phone and run it offline. And then they can have like a local database on the cell phone, and if the, even if they don't have internet access, they can still access their... Um, the last synchronized um, view of the database on the server and possibly even make changes that will be synchronized when they get network connectivity once again. Uh, and PWA allows other stuff like, you know, push notifications that go to like the lock screen and stuff like that. Uh, but that's like a, that's a stretch goal if I really feel like it. So it's likely not to happen. But yeah. So that's it. Uh, and I think that's where I'm going to basically, you know, cut this video when I ship to YouTube. I'm just checking my recording, making sure I still, yeah, I'm recording. So I got 17 minutes here right now. That's a good, that's a good length for a first video, right? So in the next video, we're going to look at the, uh, the kind of DevOpsy stuff that we're going to start with for our development environment, looking at the Vagrant setup and the Ansible setup. And that will get us, and then I'll probably start to set up the stuff like this from this starting point. And then I'll start setting up stuff and I'll decide when I want to cut the video there. But yeah, good times. See you in the next video.